Good morning, Revolution, and welcome, everybody. I hope uh, all of our uh, panelists this morning and everybody out there in Facebook and YouTube world are doing good. I hope you guys are, and sisters are getting ready for the, uh, well, it won't be for the revolution, it will be for the election uh, on uh, November the 3rd. Uh, it's going to be a a big, big day, Rosanna. And uh, are y'all ready in California? Well, we we thought we were ready, but then they started uh, posting these fake mailboxes, drop boxes. Hmm. So the, now the state I think, ordered them to stop, right? And they and the Republican Party just said, no, no, we're going to keep doing it. Yeah, they refused. So I think uh, you know, it just I think it just tells you that. Even if you think your state is safe, it's not safe. Not safe. So we can't we can't let our guard down at all. All right. Well, you're in Biden's backyard, uh, Scott. Uh, are you ready? Uh, you know, as I as I've said before, I'm seeing a lot more Biden signs around here um, than I've ever seen for a Democratic candidate. Um, you know, there, there's there's definitely been a lot of efforts to um, get out the vote, but you know, it makes me think of um, who uh, was um, Thomas Edsel in the New York Times had an article uh, saying that Republicans had been outdoing Democrats in new voter registration in swing states, um, which um, he was sort of urging, not saying that, that you know, the rest of the, these, these metrics like, like exit polling and early voting and all that stuff um, aren't important, but um, you know, he said the Republicans were up 10, the Democrats down four. Come on, yeah. new voter registration. So y'all okay. better get busy. Are you getting busy in Ohio, Anita? Oh I mean, yeah, tired. we're busy and we're getting, I mean, people are really out to vote in huge numbers and, and those mm -hmm. early, vote, early votes are going to Biden, I'm sure. Um, but uh, it's, uh, there's long lines outside every time, every day. But those lines move very quickly, and people are having satisfying experiences with early voting. Um, and okay. I happen to know about Florida too. Florida looks really good right now uh, with uh, uh, retirees carrying Biden over. You know, uh, in but in, they in say Florida. that Trump Republican, non-educated, college-educated white voters. Uh, Outregistered the, de the Democratic forces uh, ten to four, Anita, in the state of Ohio. So, Non-college um, educated. That's what uh, that's mm -hmm. what it's saying. I mean, you know, um, non-college. They they the mm -hmm. the under the wire, Michael. It, it it looks like the Republicans have some hidden plans. Are you ready? The, my thing is, is, yes, I am ready. I'm ready for the elections. I'm excited, but I don't think we can get too comfortable. And in the case of Ohio, you really got to wonder, I'm thinking back to the Ohio primaries in 2016, when Kasich, the governor, the Ohio governor, won the primary, which was no surprise. But so you wonder how much of a, an impact his presence at the Democratic National Convention, because he came out against uh, uh, Trump, of course, you wonder how much of an impact that will have, if any. But like, you know, Scott was saying, at least in, you know, rural parts of Pennsylvania, New York, um, Ohio, some people are frustrated and they're changing. You know, you are seeing more, um, you know, Biden signs in traditional, you know, Republican areas. So we'll see. Are you, are you ready? Own. Are you ready? Are you ready? I used to, you wanted to say something, Anita? We have our own uh, version of the Lincoln Project here called the Grant Project, I think, where mm. a number of state Repu Republicans have joined the anti-Trump forces and are getting out I'm there. not worried about all these Republicans are now they're going into the Democratic camp and getting ready to push their agenda. Look, how do you counter that's that? That's a tactic. That's, that's tactic. a tactic. That's a tactic that was used in Mexico in this last election, which actually is used in in several of the Mexican elections. As soon as it looked like uh, the other candidate was going to win, everybody started jumping ship onto the winning candidate <laughs> because that's where the the uh, posts are. You know, the, um, the that's division. where the, the money is going to be because that's where you can get elected into office. So people, you know, it's, it's, 
So I wouldn't put past them, you know, they, they use their tactics everywhere. <clears throat> sure. And they have, but rats also jumping can... ship, rats jumping ship. Go ahead, right. Scott. I hope y'all yeah. got some rat traps. Go <laughs> ahead, Scott. Um, you also have to consider, I mean, you know, what, what Lenin insists on is that it's the, it's the, the composition of the, the democratic movement that matters, especially what class forces are in leadership. So it's great, you know, uh, th th there are opportunists, whatever coming on, um, or there are principled Republicans finally digging deep enough to find their principles. Wait principle. a minute, ain't that a contradiction in terms principled and Republicans? What are you talking about, Scott? I mean, so they have the Grand Republicans in Ohio. I wanna see some Sumner Republicans. Charles Sumner was a Senator from Massachusetts in the uh, 1850s and 60s. Um, well, I hope you got a shovel and, and, a, a radical and, and a bulldozer. I hope you got a shovel and a bulldozer because you're going to have to unearth a cat like that that deep down <laughs> in the ground. And come on. <laughs> All right. So, a lot happened this week. Um, there was the uh, uh, hearings for the Supreme Court, and it looks like uh, uh, the nominee is. She's going to be a new justice, um, guys. Uh, am I missing something here? No, I wish my I interview not. for a teaching job, any of my teaching jobs, had had gone like hers. Like you know, being asked questions about how I would act in front of a classroom, how I would present or react to certain types of material. How you do your laundry? To... What's that? <laughs> how you do your laundry? Yeah, uh, and. Um, yeah. Oh, I'd have to give that careful consideration. Oh, yes, I'll certainly be most attentive to fulfilling the requirements and responsibilities of my, okay, oh, welcome. I can't, I can't answer anything political. You know, three branches, <laughs> one of those are the Supreme Court. I can't answer anything political, especially when it has to do with the president peacefully transitioning power. Mm -hmm. You know, it's ridiculous. It's scary, just like the Kavanaugh hearings, you know, but it's a different kind of scary. Well, you know, I I heard I read a brief by um, the uh, judge in which she said that being called the N word uh, may be bad, but you you have not proven that it created a hostile working environment. Oh my God! Can you imagine that, Rosanna? Yeah. She said, you know, maybe it just flew off your back. You know, water off a duck's back. You know, it doesn't bother you. You didn't think about it. It didn't create any. But the I think it just I mean, points to to uh, we got to change we got to change this this whole process. It's ridiculous yeah. that one person gets nominated and they're there for life. And it's also ridiculous to me that that there's supposed to be there are judges that are supposed to judge based on facts and presentations, and it's clearly not that. It's based on whether you're a Republican or a Democrat you're progressive or not and that's not the way I would want my case to be tried I would want my case to be tried based on the facts and what does the law say and those kinds of things but it's clearly that that it, it's it's flawed totally flawed and it's just really ridiculous and so well, that has to be to... on the agenda to change I the mean, way they change those, uh, the way they appoint judges too. Uh, Amy Coney Barrett was appointed to that circuit uh, court of appeals because um, that position had been held open because Mitch McConnell refused to put Obama's uh, nominee in there for for years. So it was yeah. kept open. She got it, and you know, I mean, they're stealing the courts. That Mitch McConnell held open for Trump. Mm -hmm. We need a radical reform of the judicial system. Yes. We need a radical reform of the legislative system. Mm -hmm. We need radical reforms in general, folks. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. actually, mm -hmm. we, need we need revolution. revolution. I used to say to my mother, "Are you ready for the revolution?" She said, "I am, but I don't know who who, who else is." Yeah. <laughs> you know. So, um, but look, the, the the fact of the matter is that um, if the Supreme Court is passed with right wing judges, the only there is a remedy. And the remedy is in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. And I know y'all riding with Biden for the presidency. <laughs> you know, you're not endorsing. You know, you're using it as a tool to defeat the right. That's but right. also the House is important. And the Senate is important. And the state legislatures are important. Governorship, mayor, dog catcher, 
you know, all up and down the line, the Republicans need to be uh, defeated. But some on the left are saying that, um, you know, you're endorsing and you're not uh, revolutionary enough. So uh, should we be concerned about them or are we trying to influence a broader section of the population? And what does that mean? I mean, um, in terms of the Communist Party and its press and who our audience is, I mean, um, who are we trying to influence? Uh, the working class. Working class. Of only a very small section is, you know, quote unquote leftist. It's growing. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a socialist moment. And Bernie's message, I think, has really organized and radicalized a lot of people, particularly the youth. But that's very small. It really is. You know, I, I often talk to people about the leftist bubble. You know, people only understand the terminology that we throw around a lot in these leftist bubbles. But if you go knocking doors in your neighborhood, a lot of people may never even have heard of, you know, Marx or socialism. The they may think they may, yeah, they may think socialism is just, you know, free health care. And so you really have to be in you have to meet workers where they are and not where you want them to be. You know what I mean? And so wait a minute now. Uh, I wrote an article called The Socialist Moment. I wrote another article on Lenin's 150th anniversary. I'm writing another article on the pitfalls of socialist consciousness. Are you saying uh, that I'm writing to the wrong audience? Or I'm writing on the wrong subject? Am I wasting my time? Anybody? Depends on what, what's in the article, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of rhetoric. A whole lot of rhetoric and words nobody can understand. You know I mean, I, mean? I, think it's, I think it's good to, you know, to address the concerns that, that, uh, and the notions that people have about these, about these issues. I think it's, it's important, but I, but I think it's also, you know, it's key to to point out that the party hasn't lasted a hundred years because of anything else but the fact that it's never turned its back on the working class, that it's there along, it's been an integral part of the working class, and we can continue to be part of that working class, and that's the direction that we need to go, and so uh, you, you know, we, and we've lasted this long because of that. Uh, and so where is the working class? So then the question is, where is the working class now? The working class is, you know, where it is right now and we have to accept it. And so how do we move that working class mm -hmm. to the next level? Right. That's the challenge. To consciousness. Okay, well, let me ask God a question. Should we're talking about changing the name of this uh, broadcast from uh, this week with the Communist Party to Good Morning Revolution. Should we change our mind and, 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 and call it Good Morning Comrade Rogers after Mr. Rogers? <laughs> well, I would, I, I would put the name Comrade on anything if you gave me the chance. But <laughs> I, I absolutely agree with calling Good Morning Revolution because um, I think even in the very broad working class and even in, you know, people who, who are even in other democratic movements, there is a growing understanding that there is something systemically wrong that needs a complete overhaul. I went to um, the Women's March, I remember it was last year or the year before, um, and there were multiple speakers uh, talking about, you know, the revolutionary nature of, of the fight for women's equality. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think the term revolution is one that we should that we should embrace well, and we should, we should put our own stamp on it, right? Because, you know, being clear that we're not talking, for us, a revolution does not, hopefully does not mean violence. We fight for the most peaceful transition possible. Um, violence is, is what the capitalist class tries to turn it into. But revolution- but Don't you think that there's a misunderstanding with respect to what it means to appeal to a broad audience? I mean, um, after all, what do we mean by the communist plus when we talk about our right? Isn't the issue to address issues that are felt and experienced by the broad working class public, like jobs, like health care, like the environment, like women's rights, like the fight against police violence, immigration, but to do so un in a way that talks to 
and explains the systemic nature of the crisis? Isn't is it, it's not that you don't write in a Marxist way, but that you mm -hmm. write in a Marxist way that is deep and penetrating and 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 analytic, uh, looking for the new. That's... Isn't that what we're talking about? Or that reminds That's a great <laughs> statement of the Communist Plus, I think, right there. Yeah. And as far as the trolls on the internet are concerned, I don't think uh, who are worried about how revolutionary we are. I don't think we should even worry about them. I think that's a Donald Trump talking or a Republican talking point. They're constantly trying to d put a wedge in between uh, the the United Front and say, oh, you know, Bernie stole the. Uh, I mean, uh, Biden stole the nomination from Bernie. No, the working class uh, voted for Biden. That's who they put their trust in and. I think, uh, you know, but they do want to put that wedge in there. And I see, even though they're, they're posing as, as leftists or revolutionaries on the internet, I don't think they really are. I think they're just doing Trump's work, work for him. And, not, and it's not always the most, the most revolutionary position, the most working class position is not always the most quote unquote radical. I mean, anyone can go outside and walk down Fifth Avenue with a bullhorn and chant, you know, general strike tomorrow, revolution or nothing. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that's what the conditions are. That doesn't mean that the worker, you know, they're going to think you're a crazy evangelical right wing preacher. You know, it's, they think you're the same thing. And so the fact that, as Rosanna was saying, we're in touch with the working class for over 101 years now. That's not to say we haven't made mistakes. It's not to say, you know, we don't want the conditions to be better. But I think as long, I think Joe told me the story before about the, the kite, the story Gus Hall, Gus, Gus Hall told about the kite. And, you know, sometimes the class struggle goes to the right or to the left. But as long as it's rooted in the working class, as long as it's rooted in that, you know, it's going to be okay. So we have to keep our eyes on that. I think um, the point is to appeal to diverse audiences and uh, with multiple uh, content, you know. I remember picking up George Jackson's book, Blood in My Eye. And the dedication is, this is when I was in the YCL back in the day. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna tell you how many days back it was, but it was a while ago. And I picked up that book and I looked at the dedication and it was dedicated, it said, to the black communist youth and their fathers. To the mm -hmm. black communist youth and their fathers. And my eyes swelled up with tears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because he was dedicating that book to me. Mm -hmm. you know? So I think that we have to take that into consideration as well. It's part of because young people are being radicalized is a revolution is an objective process and we have to you know keep them uh in mind as well as um and and as well as the youth in the rural areas of the country you know um and in the suburban areas of the country many of whom are coming to marxism and coming to socialism in one-sided ways there's also a question of, of, of um, maybe like an idealist versus a materialist way of thinking about who we're targeting. Because if we're thinking in, in idealist terms about you know, the primacy of the ideas, right? We, we are, we're gonna look to the people who, who seem to embrace, who've already embraced the most radical ideas. Um, uh, you know, people who are already on board with revolution, already on board with, with Marxism. Um, if we look in a more, um, I would say, a more materialist way, you know, we start looking at, we want to attract people who are part of the working class and hopefully who are, who are in some way leaders of other people in the working class who are involved in, in movements or who, are, who have a good, um, who, who, are, who are helping mobilize people. And I think Browder, we're not, I don't know if we're supposed to quote him anymore or not, but uh, he said, nobody should consider themselves a Bolshevik uh, unless there are 50 to 100 workers who look to them for leadership in the class struggle. <laughs> Seems like a really high bar, but. Uh... Well, even a broke clock can be right twice, twice a day. <laughs> I think that, Scott, you are saying in a sly way that I'm an idealist. <laughs> and <laughs> that's a, well, I, I am too, my training. 
<laughs> Bank some juice, he'll hold fast to dreams. Well, dreams die, life is a broken winged bird, y'all that cannot uh, fly. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to have a lightning round real, real quick. What are we doing to uh, defend the vote on November the 3rd? Um, and um, what are we going to do on the 4th, 5th, and 6th, and 7th? All right. Let me put it this way. Here's the lightning round. The, no, the election will, will be decided on November the 3rd. Yes or no? Michael. Hmm. Well, the YCL here in New York, they're saying if Trump even mutters a peep about I'm not accepting the way this is going, they said we're going to show up outside of Trump Tower and show him what we think. I hope you show up with 150 workers, each of you. Otherwise, <laughs> don't show up. Anita, you, that, so you didn't answer. Anita, yes or no? Uh, on November the 3rd. No, I don't I don't think we'll know on November 3rd. No. No. Rosanna, yes or no? No, we can't possibly no. know. Can't possibly know. Scott, yes or no? I think the election has already been decided by the 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 by a landslide majority of, of the voters of this country. And the process after November 3rd, up to November 3rd and after it will be um, manifesting the people's verdict and, and making sure that it is enforced. I say, uh, I have no idea, but uh, I do know that we're gonna have to be out there protecting the polls. We're gonna have to be out there demonstrating on the fourth and the fifth, all the way through inauguration day and, and, and through the first 100 days of a new administration. And Ongoing because it, it takes a fight to win. And uh, I hope that there will be, and I'm sure that there will be more space to struggle with the new administration, mm -hmm. but the struggle continues, continues. How do they say that? A luta continua? Is that the way you say it in Portuguese? Rosana. So, la luta um, a luta continua. La luta continua. La luta. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think that that just about does it. Don't we have some webinars coming up? We do. Uh, this Sunday at noon Eastern, um, not our usual time, it is at noon Eastern, uh, Vijay Prashad, who's a, a very well-known uh, scholar of, of history and uh, from a Marxist perspective, um, is going to be talking about uh, a Marxist take on, on China um, and sort of world in uh, China in the kind of imperialist in the fight against imperialism. Um, uh, so that's gonna be, I think it's gonna be great. We've already got over over 500 people registered, I think. So- Wow, we, wonderful. And then the, the People's World, they're having uh, a town hall meeting. Uh, the people have the power, a voter town hall on the, uh, October 25th, eight o'clock. Eastern, seven Central, five Pacific. Uh, they're gonna have the vice president of the uh, steel workers. Uh, they're gonna have uh, Mr. Uh, Roca from the Latino People's Movement. He was a former advisor to Mr. Sanders. We're gonna have the executive director of the Democratic Party of Montana. That's a mountain state, ain't it? I ain't never been to Montana. And we're going to have Mr. Reverend Marks he'll, he'll give a blessing to the a meeting. Um, we're, we're down with that. We're not anti God. We're anti capitalism. Uh, so we, it's going to be a wonderful uh, a, a program. Uh, and, and then we're all going to show up on November the 3rd. And so until next week, uh, have a great day. Stay safe. Uh, healthy, physically distant, but socially uh, close. There's a second wave, y'all. Don't don't get sloppy. Yeah. Don't get sloppy. Take yeah. wear the gloves, wear your mask, wash your hands, stay, stay six on. feet apart. Unless you're lovers, and then you know we need a little <laughs> exception. Take care. Have a great one. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye everybody. Bye.